Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com and today uh, we're going to be cracking open the ARP 2600 Grey Mini. So this is a very early model of the ARP 2600. Uh, first they were blue and then they were grey like this with a handle on the top and then later they came into the uh, black uh, with a Tolex case. So this is uh, one of the very first ARP 2600s ever made. It has the Tonus logo instead of the, uh, the later ARP logo. And there were only about 35 of these uh, ever made. So it's a real rarity. And uh, I bought this from someone who thought the power supply had some issues. And uh, we're going to see if he was right. And uh, we're going to rebuild the power supply. Um, and I'm going to be restoring this keyboard, uh, the synthesizer, slowly over an extended period of time, so there'll be videos from time to time of, of uh, me working on this. But um, I have the matching keyboard, so it has a matching keyboard with a, with a wood uh, handle. And uh, a lot of the sliders are, are, the slider shafts are broken and slider caps are missing. So we're going to be replacing all the sliders, recapping the entire synthesizer and uh, in getting this working perfectly. But we're going to start by assessing its current uh, state and uh, rebuilding the power supply. So we're going to bust this baby open and we do that by removing some screws on the bottom and some screws on the top and then uh, pulling the front panel back and resting it on the towel just to keep it uh, from getting scuffed up. And uh, we'll have a look at what's going on inside. So we've opened it up and uh, we're having a look inside and these are the five uh, main circuit boards. Um, they're uh, attached to the panel, the front panel. So they have sub boards and sub modules. So these three are the uh, oscillators. Here's the filter and then there, there's more modules and sub boards. Uh, it's got built in speakers and a reverb tank and the power supply is hiding back here and I will grab the camera and show you what it looks like. So here's the power supply. It's got the uh, the transformer, the fuse, uh, capacitors, voltage regulator and transistors, uh, op amp, uh, pass transistors are, are mounted here on this heat sink. And then the, uh, the power comes out here and goes through this wiring harness to all the different boards in the synthesizer. So I'm going to do something that I don't normally do and I'm actually going to fire it up knowing that it's broken and we'll take a look at the voltages on the power supply. So uh, here's the power supply and these wires are the output of the power supply. Red is plus 15 volts, black is ground, and purple is negative 15 volts. So I'm going to uh, turn the power on to the synthesizer and uh, I hear some crackling out of the speakers, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the voltages to the power supply. So black leads going on the black wire, red leads going on the red wire. Uh, so we're measuring the 15 volt bus. And uh, I'm getting about 11.7. It's bouncing around now. It's up to 12. Now it's down to 10. Uh, let's check out the, uh, the minus 15 rail. And uh, the minus 15 rail is at negative 0.263 volts. So the, the negative rail is really far out of regulation. In fact, one would think that, uh, that there's a short circuit pulling it down. So let's take a look and see if they're really, if the problem is with the power supply or if the problem is with the short circuit somewhere else in the synthesizer. So if one of the power rails is missing from the power supply, it's easy to assume that the power supply is, is defective. Uh, but that could also mean that there's a short circuit somewhere in the, in the synthesizer. So what we're going to do is we're going to either we're going to rule out or or narrow the problem down to the power supply by disconnecting the power supply from the rest of the synthesizer. So all these boards have a, a little three-pin uh, connector that uh, brings power to it. So we're going to go through and we're going to pull the power from all the boards. Some of them have uh, multiple connections on the same board. So right now. I've got the power disconnected from the, uh, from the synthesizer. Power supply is sitting by itself with no load. And I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to check the voltages again. I'll uh, sit my over here. And uh, first we're going to check the plus 15 volts. And we're at 15.01 volts. Uh, I'm going to check the minus 15 volts. And 
and uh, we are at minus 15.01 volts. So uh, we uh, we have a short circuit somewhere, and we can narrow it down pretty quick pretty quickly with our multimeter. So I'm going to turn the power of the synthesizer off, and I'm going to change uh, the multimeter setting to uh, um, to ohms. And uh, we know that the short is on the negative rail, so we're going to measure the resistance between the uh, the pin where the purple wire comes in, the pin where the black wire comes in. So we're going to measure the resistance of the 15 volt rail. And uh, I'm guessing one of them will be very low. So this one is 38.5 kilo ohms. This one here is 0 0.4 ohms. So it looks like we probably found our short, but let's see if there's any other areas where there's short circuits. Uh, this one is 16 kilo ohms. This one is 22k. Uh, this one is 13k. Over here, this one is 8k. Uh, this one 11.7k. Five K and four hundred nineteen K. So this this one here has a resistance way way lower than all the other the other ones, orders of magnitude lower. So the short circuit is de is definitely here, and we'll get to repairing that later. That's not going to be the the purpose of this video, but we are going to continue and uh, and do a rebuild of the power supply. So I'm going to pull the power supply now, and the way that we do that is uh, it, it's, the circuit board is, is resting on a plate on the bottom of the synthesizer, so is the transformer. So I'm going to, I, or I have disconnected uh, two nuts from, uh, that are holding these pass transistors to the heat sink plate, and then two screws back here, and one screw up here, and then you can lift the power supply up and out. So when taking the power supply out, uh, some solder joints to this uh, pass transistor cracked. Uh, so that we'll solder this back on. But the uh, the old mica insulating wafers are way past their prime, and uh, the thermal compound is is long dried up. So we're going to put new wafers on, new thermal compound when we put this back in. Uh, but we've got the power supply kind of sitting here now, and we're going to have to work on it like this uh, because the wiring harness that brings the power in is bundled up with other wires for the speaker and, and, and things like that. So uh, we don't want to undo all of that when we can access the board here. If we really wanted to take the power supply out, we could desolder these wires with the outputs of the power supply and desolder the wires with the... Uh, uh, inputs from the transformer and then we'd be able to get that out but I think we can we can service it just fine uh, from where it is uh, so you might notice that this uh, ARP 2600 power supply looks different from other ARP power supplies and uh, while it looks different it, it, it's pretty much the same circuit so on the uh, on most other ARPs they use uh, individual diodes uh, for the bridge rectification here there's a little bridge rectifier module sitting there uh, then here are the main filter capacitors. They're the same as your other R power supplies. The plus 15 volt rail uses a 723 voltage regulator and has a trimmer for adjustment and a pass transistor. The uh, minus 15 volt rail uses an op amp and a pass transistor and has a trimmer for adjustment. And then there's uh, two tantalum capacitors at the output. Um, on the uh, other ARPs, there are little blue beads and they're 10 microfarads. On the ARP 2600, there are 8 microfarads and they're axial. So we're going to replace uh, the filter capacitors uh, and we're going to increase their voltage rating and temperature rating. Um, I mean, these are still alive and they're 46 years old, um, but no doubt they're, they're dried up and not performing as, as well as they did when they were new. So uh, by uh, not only replacing them, but improving them, um, they should last another 45 years. 
and then uh, these tantalum capacitors we're going to replace with electrolytic capacitors and that's uh, pretty much all we're going to do to the power supply. We're going to solder back on the pass transistor uh, with the cracked solder joints and we're going to put new uh, um, mica pad and, and heat sink compound on there when we reattach it. So here's the power supply with the, uh, the new capacitors installed and I shortened this uh, very primitive zip tie which is a soldered wire on the board that, to keep the capacitors from vibrating. So we replaced these three capacitors and these two and uh, soldered on the, uh, the pass transistor that had come off um, and I reflowed the other one as well since uh, there might have been stress on the, uh, the, the uh, solder joints there from removing it. Um, and I put a new insulating uh, thermal transfer pad there and uh, bolted everything down and we're ready to turn it on and make sure we didn't break anything. Um, I know the synthesizer was broken but the power supply was fine so uh, let's confirm that that's still the case. So I turned the synthesizer on and I'm going to measure the uh, plus 15 volt rail which is 14.97, uh, which is fine. I haven't done any calibration to this and I'm not going to until um, I repair more of the synthesizer. Uh, let's check the minus 15. So uh, putting the ground, putting it here, and it is minus 14.86. So uh, we did not break anything. Power supply is uh, still good. So those voltage measurements, of course, were taken with the wire harness for the power disconnected because we still have a short circuit somewhere after this connector on board, too. And we're going to leave the tracking down and repairing of that short circuit for another video. And with that, we've taken our first step towards restoring this ARP 2600 Gray Mini. Uh, we did some basic troubleshooting and found out that the reason is it isn't working is because of a short somewhere here around oscillator 1. Uh, and we rebuilt the power supply, so uh, we have nice clean power and we don't fry anything else as we continue to troubleshoot and restore this keyboard. Uh, so that'll do it for this uh, video. Um, if uh, people are interested, I will make more videos as I restore this uh, Gray Mini. I'm going to be doing it in little bits from time to time as, uh, as I have time available. So if this is something that you're interested in seeing, please let me know about it by posting in the comments or, or sending me a message through my website, synthchaser.com. If you have any questions, also uh, contact me either through the YouTube channel or through my website. Thanks again for watching. Bye.